All right, looks like everybody's settled in. Well, welcome to today's webinar, Retirement Reimagined and an introduction to AAII Retirement Investing featuring Cynthia and Charles. My name is Jennifer Shear, and I'll be your host for today. A few things to go over before we begin. I wanna remind all of our webinar viewers that AAII is a nonprofit educational group and is not a financial advisor, and thus is not able to give personal advice. Every investor is different. That's why our goal with each broadcast and article is to educate you on how to make better financial decisions. And a handout of the presentation will be available under the handout section of your GoToWebinar control pan panel, which is located on the right-hand side of your screen. And the handout section is, um, is available throughout the entire broadcast. And additionally, a copy of the slides dur uh, used during today's presentation will be sent to all who attended today. And if you have any questions for our speaker during the presentation, please submit them using the question section of your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, and then once our presentation concludes, uh, Charles, our moderator for today, will select a few questions uh, for Cindy to answer. And questions that are not selected for the broadcast will be reviewed and addressed afterwards. And if you experience any issues with the audio or the video of the webinar, please, please consult these instructions on how to change your device's settings, or you can consult the GoToWebinar website for support at gotowebinar.com. And just a friendly reminder that this presentation is recorded and a replay of the webinar will be available tomorrow on AAII's YouTube channel, along with links to this presentation's handouts and any resources that we discussed during the presentation. And the PDF and a link to the recording will also be available at aaii.com slash webinars. And uh, for new users uh, or viewers, we'd like to give a little background about our organization. The American Association of Individual Investors is an independent nonprofit corporation formed in 1978 for the purpose of assisting individuals in becoming effective managers of their own assets through programs of education, information, and research. And with that, I'd like to hand over the presentation to Charles. Thanks, Jenna. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we're glad to uh, have you with us this afternoon. Um, for those of you, uh, most of you probably know who I am, but for those of you who, who don't, uh, I'm Charles Ropelet. I'm a vice president with the American Association of Individual Investors. I'm also the AAII journal editor. Uh, I'm also in the saving for retirement phase, and uh, that will make more sense to you in a, in a few minutes. Uh, but first, I want to uh, introduce the star of today's presentation, Cindy. Um, Cindy, Join us earlier this year. She's our new investment editor, uh, but she brings with, with her years of experience in the financial field. So, Cindy, uh, I'll let you uh, give everybody a, a brief introduction. Hi, my name is uh, Cindy McLaughlin. It is a pleasure to meet all of you virtually. Um, I joined AAII about six months ago, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. I have um, just a huge passion for individual investors and financial education, especially retirement education. I also, prior to joining AAII, worked at a firm called One America Financial Partners for a couple of years. I worked in the retirement services division. So I was working with plan sponsors on providing their participants educational information to encourage them to participate in their plans and save and make the best decisions possible for their retirements. I worked at Invesco prior to that, um, where I worked in the ETF division and I created um, a financial education program for um, allowing advisors to receive their CE credits and I also created a lot of content and information around ETFs allowing investors to really understand what those were and make good decisions. So in total I have about 11 years of financial services experience. My education is an MBA in finance at DePaul University and going back to undergraduate, um, I went to a small college in Western Nebraska where I majored in computer science and mathematics. Um, a little bit of personal information about me. I live in central Indiana, about 20 miles south of Indianapolis. 
my significant other and I have a two-year-old great Pyrenees and my significant other is a mechanical engineer. So my mathematical background allows me to understand approximately 80% of what he's talking about, about 80% of the time. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to present today. Great to have you, Cindy. And I think I'd probably understand 20%, not 80% of the uh, of the engineering. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, today we're going to actually uh, introduce you to our forthcoming newsletter, AAII Retirement Investing. Um, but before we do, we just want Cindy and I want to talk a little bit about our, our, our personal experiences uh, with, with retirement. Um, but obviously, both of us are, are not retired yet. Uh, but this newsletter is actually going to be designed to to actually appeal to people at various life stages, um, whether they're young and they're you know starting out for retirement or you're well into retirement. Um, and we just want to kind of talk about some of our personal experiences as well. Um, speaking personally, and I've written about this before, uh, the one thing I found really helpful in terms of saving for retirement and just saving in general is just having automatic deposits. I have deposits to our IRAs, uh, to my 403B plan, because AEI is a nonprofit. Uh, we have a 403B plan rather than a 401K plan. Uh, it's a function of the tax code, uh, but also just having money going to savings as well. That Having that set up in advance, uh, it's known as a Ulysses contract, where you make the decision about how you're going to act in advance. It's been very helpful for me. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, I have older parents. I have an older mother-in-law who lives next to me, um, and so I see what impact that has. My mother-in-law, we're actually looking at getting her a higher level of care. Uh, I maintain a spreadsheet of her savings of what we're spending. Um, and as some of you well know, uh, as you start increasing the care in retirement, those expenses go up very quickly. Um, and certainly a drain on spending. And so it's very much a, a financial problem. Uh, but fortunately, there are programs that do exist. Uh, we will cover those in some basis as we go forward with the newsletter. Uh, I know there's programs like aid and attendance for veterans, uh, Holocaust survivors. I recently found out there's a program called a blue card uh, uh, for uh, Holocaust survivors. And so there are various programs out there to provide financial assistance, but obviously a lot of it comes uh, from what you're able to save, and if you're fortunate enough to have a pension as well, uh, that certainly plays a role. Uh, Cindy, anything you would like to uh, add? Oh, thank you. So Charles mentioned that he is a in the savings phase also. Um, I am in the savings phase, but I'm starting to look a little bit over to the retirement preparation phase, which the, we'll explain the phases. They'll make a lot more sense very soon. And it's, um, it's, it's very challenging just to, it's a, it's a big thing to think about. But when I worked at One America, I mentioned I was working with plan sponsors on pushing out retirement education and trying to encourage their participants to save. I was kind of taken aback by just how challenging that is. It's really hard to get people to save. You can provide them information that shows, um, it gives them an idea of what it will look like if you set aside a certain amount, or you can encourage them maybe to give up something and do it gradually, or you can take the other tack and show them, you know, what happens if you don't and do some comparisons to maybe a case where somebody has, and it's just really difficult to get people to save. So I'm very appreciative of having this opportunity to provide all of these helpful uh, tools and information that will hopefully inspire you to um, take planning actions and it will hopefully help you with your situations. Great. Thanks, Cindy. Um, and so I know everyone hears, everyone is here actually to learn more about AAI Retirement Investing, our, our new newsletter. Um, could you talk about some of the challenges of retirement? 
Yes, definitely. So I just wanted to open this up by, we, we've talked about how this is just, it's such a complex thing and it's very difficult and going from being a worker and a saver into being retired is a very difficult transition. So this is evidenced by one in five American workers feel very confident about the ability to afford a comfortable retirement. And 64% of them also feel very stressed about retirement planning. This was something I found in the 2023 Retirement Competence Survey by Employee Benefit Research Institute. So that gives you just a flavor of um, all of us in the United States, how we are thinking about it, our mood and appetite for retirement. So um, kind of launching in to why we are creating this new offering, this newsletter, uh, we know that retirement is a large nebulous goal. So it is really dependent on make it happens, the preparation happens over a long period of time and it's dependent on making really good decisions all along the way. There's just, there's a lot of pressure there to make good decisions. And additionally, we are faced with some difficult challenges. Um, people don't have pensions anymore. People who are going into retirement may not have a pension. Social security may be diminished. We are living longer, so we have this longevity risk. And a lot of people are really afraid of running out of money. Um, other things that we're worried about, increasing healthcare costs, uh, inflation. I think the inflation last year just caught a lot of people off guard. And we have things that are just, you know, going to be higher for longer. We're never going to see some of these things in the grocery store go down price-wise to what they were before COVID. So those are some of the challenges. And then... Um, with planning a legacy, um, we have the SECURE Act and all of the complications that it has brought with um, inheriting IRAs and other assets. So those are some of the challenges. Um, anything else, Charles, or should I um, keep talking about the newsletter? <laughs> well, I think it's probably good maybe to talk about the, um, you know, about the life three life stages we've been talking about that um and that's certainly going to be a, a core part of the newsletter and how we provide uh content well before we jump there um another reason we are launching this is we are finding that or we have found throughout the years that our members really enjoy and use our retirement information so we are launching this out of member need and interest. And we know that also current members will give um, AAII membership as a gift to their family members. So we wanted to make sure that we were a little bit um, encompassing in how we are planning this offering and the type of information we are providing. And you know, um, for those of you who are AAII subscribers right now, we are objective. We put the individual investor first and we are providing objective information. We're not trying to sell you advisory services or investment products. We're just um, individual investors ourselves and we are providing information that will help you make better investment decisions. And finally, we are also looking to bridge the informational gap with more in-depth information. We realized that a lot of retirement plans may have retirement information, but um, we're looking to kind of put that in one place, create one home for this, and really um, bring that together. So that is um, a little overview about why we are launching this new offering. Okay. 
So here are the faces. We uh, did extensive brainstorming about how we were going to position this information and make it available. And we decided maybe the best thing to do was to look at retirement over um, all the things you need to do throughout your working years. So we came up with three phases, saving for retirement, preparing for retirement, and then finally making it into retirement and living in retirement. And the thing with this, um, these phases is you can be in multiple phases at any time. At, um, for instance, if you're saving for retirement, but um, planning on retiring in a few years, you are looking at you know the phases for saving and preparing and all of the things that you need to do. Um, and then when you are preparing for retirement, you may be looking at things that are applicable to living in retirement. So we decided to kind of structure the content that way. And of course, there will be content that is applicable to everyone. Yeah, and I think it's important to note that, you know, when we talk about retirement, as many of you know, some of the things that apply to one group certainly covers other groups. Um, and obviously there's things that are specific to certain age groups, but a lot of stuff covering retirement isn't particularly limited to age or, or, or life stage. But uh, speaking of life stages, uh, Jen, I think we have a, a poll question, correct? Yes, uh, let me put it on the screen right now. So feel free to uh, vote in our poll. So the question is, what life phase are you currently in regarding retirement? And feel free to um, start voting and I will give everybody a couple, uh, maybe one or two minutes to vote and then I will display the results. Great, and while you are taking the, the uh, poll, I just wanna point out that as someone who works uh, for AI and internally in the field of investing, one thing that I always think gets overlooked is just those key decisions that someone needs to make in, the, in their 60s. And, and those of you who have been through this phase uh, are, are familiar with this, but um, as, as you approach your 60s, you have to start thinking about when, are you, when will you file for, for Social Security? Uh, obviously, as you approach 65, are you going to take traditional Medicare or Medicare Advantage? Uh, certainly, um, and perhaps for some people, it's even before uh, age 60, uh, was particularly when we look at the FIRE movement, um, when do you retire? Um, and obviously, you know, when when you retire, where do you retire? What are you going to do in retirement? Um, what withdrawal strategy you're going to follow? Um, and City, I believe after we uh, see the poll results, we're gonna discuss some of the content uh, that's going to be covered in the newsletter in a little bit more detail, correct? Yes. Great. All right, I'm gonna close the poll. Got about 78% who have voted. Okay. And I'm going to share the results. So it looks like we have about 76% of people uh, who attended today are living in retirement. We have a 19% who are preparing for retirement or in that transition stage. And then we have about 6% saving for, for retirement. Great to see you. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. That You know, that fits in with our broader membership, the demographic trends we see. Um, many of you are life members. Uh, many of you have been life members for, for many years, and, and thank you for that. But it, it's also good to see, uh, you know, people in the, in the earlier stages of retirement, we certainly, uh, with their educational offerings, um, can certainly help people throughout the lifetime uh, become better managers of their own portfolios. Uh, but, but Cindy, do you want to discuss the, the newsletter a little bit in more detail and some of the things we're going to cover? So these are some topical examples of content that we are going to cover. Withdrawal strategies, that seems to be a really hot topic. And there are just so many ideas and methods that this covers. We have our AAII Level 3 withdrawal strategy um, with our founder, Clunin. There's the uh, William Benyon 4% rule, bucket strategy. Uh, I mentioned the whole thing with inherited IRAs and 
Roth IRAs, you have um, that whole backdoor Roth IRA conversion situation. And uh, these are just, you know, there's so many little tricky nuanced things with uh, all of these types of strategies. That is something that we look forward to covering in detail. And then asset allocation. So, you know, how do you set up your assets? When do you need to modify them? When do you need buffer assets? Um, how do you manage these? How often do you review? And, um, you know, depending on what the market's doing, do you uh, sit tight or when do you decide to take action? And one of my favorites, one something that I think is really interesting is the sequencing risk. So what happens if there's a bear market during your early retirement years? What can you do to make sure that, or try to make sure that you don't um, have problems with outliving your investments? So that's a, a big topic that we are excited about covering. And we have the AAII level three strategy we can discuss to really um, help you get through that. And then claiming social security. I um, don't think there is a more complex topic. So uh, that is one um, that is probably pertinent to those who are looking to transition into retirement, but it's something that all um, life phases need to be aware of. And tax planning, um, you don't want to get kind of clobbered by um, the IRS. So what do you need to know as you're planning your strategies, as you're um, looking at taking your RMDs? What can you do to minimize your tax impact? And then we talked about inflation. So um, inflation is something that it's largely out of an investor's control but there are things you can do with your portfolio to um, make sure or help bring that back to um, a reality where you don't have to worry about it as much. And then estate planning. So um, I looked up this um, little fact and found this little graphic about 84.5 trillion is expected to be transferred and out of that um, some will be given to charity and some will be given to heirs so estate planning is not only about the people who are transitioning the money but also as heirs what do you need to do to prepare your heirs what do you need to do to be um, ready to accept this uh, estate planning money that is coming your way and that kind of also gets into a little bit with lifestyle issues. Um, do you, you know, practice uh, retirement? What are the pros and cons of considering more work, of maybe delaying your retirement a little bit? Is there a benefit to delaying Social Security, a benefit to uh, delaying, or, you know, can you delay taking your RMDs? And then, um, kind of those tips for having crucial money conversation with your family. So I'm going to talk a little bit later about our um, immediate content plan, but for the month of November, um, I'm planning to have a lot of content around the estate planning and those um, types of conversations because in November, obviously, people will start gathering for the holidays and we'll all be spending more time with our families. And I just wanted to add that we are going to create a lot of this content um, at AAII, but if we do not have the expertise for something, we're going to go to our extensive Rolodex and strong relationships with outside um, experts and get them involved as well. So um, look forward to seeing a lot of good information and content from those types of people. Okay, Charles. 
Thanks, Cindy. So I'm going to talk a little about withdrawal strategies, and and we'll be covering those. Um, certainly, a, you know, a hot topic for those of you either transitioning to retirement or in retirement. Um, and certainly, one of the big challenges when someone retires is, um, you know, what withdrawal strategy do you follow? Um, and there's a lot of opinions on it. Um, we obviously have the AI. AII level three withdrawal strategy that was created by our founder, Jim Clunan. Um, and you know, his goal, he was really focused on maximizing growth of, of capital while at the same time ensuring that you could fund your withdrawals. Um, there's a bucket strategy, uh, which a lot of people actually find easier to understand. Um, William Bengen has his 4% uh, rule approach, um, which is widely talked about in the retirement letter. Um, Cindy, if you wouldn't mind forwarding the slide, I'll kind of walk through a little of these. Um, so one thing I want to point out, um, and I, I showed the slide to our Boston AI, our AAII Boston chapter uh, a few weeks ago, um, is when you hit retirement, there's various theories about how you should allocate your portfolio. Um, at the very top, you see our level three approach, which maintains a very high exposure to equities before dropping a little bit in retirement. Uh, the arms line, gold line, depending on how it appears on your screen, um, is a traditional 60-40 portfolio, 60% stocks, 40% long-term bonds. Uh, this pretty much, it's called a glide path in terms of how these allocations change uh, once you go from your young, say, 20s and 30s into retirement, but that stays pretty steady. Um, you do see the V-shaped line. The theory about this is lower your exposure to risky assets like stocks till you hit retirement. And then once you're in retirement, ramp back up your exposure to stocks. Um, some other strategies follow either a through or two strategies, such as target date funds, which evolve their allocations throughout retirement. And we'll certainly be talking about those um, in future issues of retirement investing, but those are basically designed to give people an allocation that's set on the retirement age and then evolve through retirement. And some just go to retirement, meaning they reach retirement and that's their final allocation. Or we mostly see a through strategy, which is where they continue to evolve their allocation up to a certain date. Uh, and that date changes by fund family. So even among mutual funds, running target date funds, we see differences in how they allocate. Um, and at the very bottom, you see is a new dies. And this, this concept is you get to retirement, figure out how much you need for your living expenses throughout retirement, take all risk off of that. Say you built, buy annuities, maybe you buy a bond ladder. The idea is you don't take any risk. And then whatever's left in your portfolio, then you can do whatever. Um, and so that's the range of primary theories about how you should allocate in retirement from the financial experts. And so, as you can see, there's really no consensus here on how to do this. We have our own opinions about how investors should do it, but realize that if you go to other sources, you talk to say financial planners, you may hear something that's different than what, what, what we might be saying, uh, but we're actually going to help you understand these, understand your options. Um, and do realize it's not a one and only, you can mix and match among these as well. Uh, but Cindy, do you mind going to the next strategy? Um, the next slide. The other option you could do is simply keep your allocation pretty much unchanged. And I, I showed this in the last slide uh, with the 60-40 approach or, or the level three. Uh, the level three approach that Jim Clunan espoused, uh, that's pretty much similar to our aggressive investor. And these are the asset allocation models uh, you can find these on AAII.com. They're available to all members. Uh, you see the URL on the slide here. Uh, but our aggressive investor, we say 90% stock, but it really is almost entirely stocks uh, with a small amount of cash or safe assets. So you have some emergency money or say money to fund withdrawals. Um, our moderate investor allocation is that 60-40 allocation I showed you before. Still really oriented towards growing wealth, uh, but reduces some of the volatility. For, so for some people, giving up some of that return 
might actually make the portfolio easier to stick with. It really is a kind of an all weather uh, portfolio. Uh, and finally, we have our conservative investor allocation. This is really designed for shorter uh, time frames or for people who just are pretty much risk adverse. And it really is 40% stocks versus the moderate 60% stocks. Uh, the aggressive investor, again, we say 90, but really it's almost all stocks. So you could follow one of these asset allocation strategies. And I think one of the things we'll talk about as we go forward uh, with the retirement investing newsletter is realize that if your retirement income needs, say for your living expenses, is covered by pension, uh, perhaps you have an annuity, or, or perhaps you just have enough wealth that you know you're not going to spend it all, then your allocation decision becomes a lot easier because it really is, well, what are you comfortable with and what do you want to do versus someone who's going to rely on the portfolio for withdrawals? That comes into a different decision. And we're going to help you understand these choices and help you think through them because certainly um, it, it is a big decision that people have to work through once they're in retirement. Uh, Cindy, could you go to the next slide? So one of the things we talked about is level three. Uh, and this is actually uh, a table we ran in the January uh, 2023 issue of the journal. Uh, those of you who've read Jim Clunan's investing at level three will be familiar with this. So Jim Clunan's level three approach was really having your, your investment portfolio, having your growth portfolio, uh, and then having what he calls defensive assets. Uh, Wade Fowl, who's an investing expert, he's written, I'm uh, sorry, a retirement expert, and he's written some articles for us in the journal, uh, calls it really having buffer assets. And so the whole idea is you have portfolio that's, in, that's really invested in the market, trying to grow, perhaps you have some bonds included as well, but then you have this bucket, so to speak, this allocation of assets that aren't going to be impacted by what the market is doing. Um, as William Bernstein, the, uh, the famous uh, uh, financial advisor and neurosurgeon recently said in the AI Journal, uh, in a crisis, only money is money. And so when we talk about the safe portion here, it really is cash assets, money market funds, CDs, money that doesn't matter what happens in the market, this money's going to be there for you to spend. Uh, and what Jim Clunan allocated for is in the years leading up to retirement, start allocating to this, what he calls defensive assets, some call buffer assets. But the idea is whenever the market's close to its high, you start funding that in the years headed into retirement. Um, then to, once in retirement, you either have your equity allocation or you have your safe assets, your defensive assets. And so what Jim espoused, as so long as the stock market was near 5% of its high at the highs at the end of the year, you withdraw from your equity portion. But whenever the market was more than 5% off from its highs, then you tap from your safe assets. And the whole argument for that was you want to avoid selling your stocks when they're down, when there's a correction in the market. So the idea is you're not withdrawing from your equity portion when it's down, you're trying to give yourself the chance to uh, allow your portfolio to, to recover. Um, and, and we've covered this in the AI journal. And, and again, uh, we'll talk about it uh, in the newsletter. Uh, Cindy, could you go to the next slide? Now, for some people, uh, the bucket strategy is just an easier concept to grasp. And the way you think about it is it's time segmented. So. You, your bucket number one on the slide is basically money you're going to need within, let's say, the next three, four, five years. Uh, how long that period should be will differ based on who you speak to, uh, but it's akin to Jim Clunan's safe bucket of assets. It's money that's not put at risk to what's going on in the financial markets. Now, your second bucket is your moderate bucket. It could, say, be a 60-40 portfolio. Uh, it might be money you might need, say, in five to 10 years, maybe a little bit longer. But the idea is you're taking some moderate risk. You have a greater allocation to, say, bonds or perhaps CD ladders where you're generating some income, but you're still seeking growth. And finally, bucket three, this is your growth portfolio. You don't need the money for at least 10 years. If the stock market enters a bear market like it did in 2022. You're on phase because you have the time 
allow your portfolio to recover and grow to new highs. And so the whole idea is really just segmenting your assets by time. And again, for some people, this is just a more intuitive approach. Uh, and so we'll give you some thoughts about that, pros and cons, and how you would go about setting this up. Uh, Cindy, could you change slides again? So the other thing uh, is William Bangan. Um, he had the 4% rule, and chances are some of you have heard about it. Um, it's, it's used by a lot of financial advisors. Uh, the idea is at retirement, and by the way, this I should back up and say the strategy. Uh, uh, several, actually, in a, we did this uh, several years ago. We came up with a Trinity study, um, and we'll reference it um, in a magazine that we published in the AI Journal. That was actually one of the first studies to talk about this withdrawal method. The idea that you could have a inflation adjusted withdrawal rate uh that study which ai members were really made about one of the first ones to be made aware about um has been cited in several academic uh and professional studies since but the whole idea is that at retirement you you tend to take out a set percent of, of your portfolio so say you have a million dollar portfolio just to keep numbers very simple and rounded your first year, you would take out $40,000. $40,000 is 4% of a million dollars. Every year, that $40,000 gets increased for a rate of inflation. So say in year two, inflation's just gone bonkers and it's 5%. So you raise that $40,000 by 5%, which, um, and then you keeping, which is about $6,000. And each year, you just keep increasing the amount uh, uh, that you're withdrawing each year by the inflation rate. Um, and what Bengen did was he actually tested over a, year, a period of time and he found out that if you just had a 50% stocks, 50% intermediate term bonds portfolio, um, that lasted all the, over 35 year periods. Over all the 35 years um, he tested, but he actually found out you can actually have up to a 75% allocation in equities, meaning that even in retirement, you can still see growth and not have to worry about outliving your assets. Uh, Cindy, can you get to the next slide, please? Now, one of the things that uh, Bengen did, he actually did a follow-up and we interviewed him in the AI Journal a few years ago. Um, he actually later found out that you could actually support a 4.5% safe withdrawal rate. Um, and he changed his allocation to be more along the lines of our moderate portfolio allocation. Um, we have a 45 to 55% allocation in stocks, a 30, 35% to 45% allocation in bonds, and 10% in cash. But one of the big things is when he first did his study, he was looking at just at large cap stocks. And what he talked about in this study was actually diversifying your stock portfolio, particularly holding small cap stocks. Uh, and as AI members know, uh, we've long talked about the advantages of, of incorporating small cap stocks, particularly small cap value stocks uh, into your portfolio. So his allocation actually tends to line up a little bit more with our moderate allocation, which we showed you. Um, but one of the things on here, some observations I've done uh, running the numbers, and we can certainly do an updated version of this for the newsletter, um, is typically when these portfolios failed, uh, and failed meaning the retiree outlived their savings. The portfolio ran out of money before death. Um, and in a perfect economic, rational world, you would you would die with one dollar left in your bank account out of the money you did not want to go into your heirs. Um, and if we knew the magic formula to get you to that every single time, uh, we talk about it. So, but uh, no one's figured that that puzzle out yet. But the whole idea is to make sure you don't run out of money before you die. You always have something left. Um, and so one of the things he, so when it does happen, it's considered failure. Um, and what I found out is that tend to, you tend to be, if you reach year nine uh, with less money in retirement savings than you had to start, historically, that's when portfolios tend to fail. Um, and it's usually because there's high inflation or there's a really bad bear market in the early years of retirement. That's why you see people talking about things like the safe assets Jim Clinton incorporated into the level three approach 
or with a bucket strategy while you have this short-term savings. So you don't, you actually have safe assets. So you're not selling, at, you're not pulling money out of stocks when your portfolio is at, probably at its largest when you reach retirement and when those stock values are, are, are down. But the other part about this 4% rule is that at the other end, when it was successful, often people ended up with much more money than they started with. Often the balances were, were huge. Um, so one of the things that you could do with this type of strategy is make periodic adjustments. Uh, and we've talked about this in the journal and certainly in the retirement letter, uh, we'll introduce this idea of periodic adjustments about some of the choice you could possibly make uh, along the way with your withdrawals. And some of you might already be doing it um, with your own portfolios, not because of financial theory, but just because you realize it makes you more comfortable or certainly it's helped you get through uh, years like 2022 by perhaps tightening your belt a little bit on, on the spending side, withdrawing a little bit less to give your portfolio time uh, to recover. Uh, Cindy, could you go to the next slide? And so one of the things in here, when we talk about these allocations, these glide past these safe assets, it's just understanding for retirees and for even for people approaching retirement um, is that the order in which returns occur matters greatly. Uh, so this is a from an article I ran in 2015 in the AI journal. Um, this orange bar shows what happens if you had your best returns first and then your worst returns last. As you can see, a big arc, but you still ended up at the very end of that 25-year period with the largest amount of sums, the blue line is what actually happened with the market. But the bottom black line shows what happens if you have the worst returns first and you were taking withdrawals. Um, as you can see, you nearly drained your portfolio by year 25. Um, and this is because you were taking money out and selling stocks early in retirement when your assets were large your allocation of stocks was large and stock prices were down. So basically you had stock prices were down and then you were pulling money out of the stock portfolio. So you weren't giving your portfolio a chance uh, to, to rebound. So again, this notion of perhaps having an allocation of some assets early in retirement so you don't necessarily have to sell stocks when they're down, having that allocation to safe assets. Uh, Cindy, can you get to that next slide? And so um, I actually ran a more recent example. So this is showing, this is for actually a Vanguard S&P 500 mutual fund showing what happened between 1988 and 2022. And this is a simpler chart. The blue line is what we actually saw happen in the markets. Uh, but this orange line is, are really what happened to the markets if we had the worst returns first and you were taking inflation adjustment withdrawals at the beginning. As you can tell, um, because you get the best returns last, you did have an increase, um, a rebound in your in your value. Uh, that that downward slash at the very end is 2022 last year. But you notice there is an actual gap there between what you would have had in the blue line if what actually happened in the markets happened in that sequential order versus if we assume the worst returns happened first, you can see that gap in, in wealth. And it's you don't ever really recover that gap in wealth if you don't have the ability to allow the equity portion of your portfolio uh, to, to rebound from a tough market condition. Uh, Cindy, can you go to the next um, slide? Actually, I think uh, we have a poll here, Jenna. Hmm. Yeah, uh, go ahead and share the poll. So after uh, hearing poll about our sample content, we wanted to find out what content you would be interested in. And Cindy, while we're taking the poll, um, I think our probably our the people here listening to the poll would be interested in hearing. I'm sorry, the people listening to our webinar. If I can get my words straight, uh, I'd probably be kind of curious to hear what kind of retirement aspects of retirement you find interesting. What I find most interesting is this buffering concept and the idea of not spending down your principal account. I, I think that is fascinating and all of the withdrawal strategies around that, that, that is a really fascinating topic and 
what is most compelling to me is um, how you can work everything to manage to be um, financially independent. So uh, you are not running into situations where you're draining your whole portfolio. That is what I find most compelling. All right, looks like about 70% has voted. We're still getting a couple people in. Let's do a poll now and I'll share the results. Looks like we're at about 20% uh, for Alice asset allocation, 28% uh, for tax planning, 32% for withdrawal strategies, which makes sense, and 6% for sequence risk, and 14% for legacy or estate planning. Good to see. Great. I'll Thank hide you. that now. Thanks, guys. Interesting. Uh, and Cindy, could you uh, tell our members more about what they'll be getting with the AII retirement investing? Yes, um, absolutely. So this is, first of all, a standalone subscription. And we're going to have our content on the website, which allows us to quickly get things out for you to be able to consume and take immediate action. We will have a monthly newsletter with more in-depth content and then a weekly insights summary. Um, we're going to have a short article in that summary and then some news information and an opportunity to participate in a survey um, at AAII we have the long tradition of having the sentiment survey so we wanted to bring that same idea over and we will be asking questions um, trying to get a retirement pulse it's called um, retirement pulse so we're really excited about that um, with the monthly newsletter, we'll have probably four to five in-depth articles, and um, it will be curated content. We we talked about for our life stages, kind of spanning, you know, the whole um, cycle of retirement planning. These are actionable insights, and we are going to build out retirement resources, things to um, kind of help you. Um, bring everything together and take the content and then um, make better decisions with it, possibly calculators, guides, that type of information, videos, and um, of course we'll have things like IRS updates, um, looking to provide a lot of that information. And just to note, this complements our AAII journal, our existing newsletters and the A plus investor um, product. Um, this is not meant to replace them. Uh, you can still, and you will still get all of that information. This is just kind of giving um, a home or one place to access everything retirement, a one stop shop, if you will. Um, the AAII Retirement Investing is part of our Platinum subscription for those of you who are Platinum subscribers. Okay, and just to give you um, a little more information on the timing and then um, a little taste of upcoming content, um, we have a, a lot of newsletters at AAII, so I wanted to let you know that this particular newsletter will come out on Tuesdays. The weekly insights will be each Tuesday, and then the um, monthly version will be on the second Tuesday of each month, and we will have archives available on the website. Um, upcoming content we're going to have in the inaugural issue, in-depth um, features about the bucket strategy, uh, tips for keeping your 401k on track, like how often should you look, what should you do, when do you need to make adjustments, and allocating for your retirement goals if you have some bucket list thing you want to do in your retirement, um, how would you approach that? And an, um, one approach that I find is really interesting, how do you plan for your expenses? Making sure that you have your fixed and larger expenses 
covered with your retirement um, allocations. Um, that is an important concept and yet another little approach to managing your withdrawals. And um, finally, we will have fireside chat videos. Uh, Jenna and I are busy um, behind the scenes making those. And the summary update, um, many of our Platinum subscribers will know that um, the Platinum Digest contains a little summary for all of the model portfolios. Um, it will also include retirement investing, although we do not have a model portfolio associated with this particular product. And then going on, um, coming this fall, uh, Jenna, do you want to talk about this a little? Yeah, definitely. Um, so what you guys see on the screen right now is um, a little announcement about, so basically um, the AI retirement investing is coming this fall. Um, if you want to be a part of the group that it will know or be the first people to know uh, when our, our uh, product goes live and then also information about how to get early access to it, um, follow this link to learn more. So this, uh, this link is uh, easily accessible in the PDFs that are um, in the handout. Um, and then that will also be sent to you tomorrow in your email um, if you attended today. And then also I put it in the chat um, so you can go ahead and click there directly if um, for more information. But just to give a little bit more background as well, um, so AAI Retirement Investing will be available early October uh, 2023, so very soon. And uh, more details about the precise launch date will be pr provided soon. Uh, we do have an upcoming webinar um, that will go over the website walkthrough as well as a content walkthrough on October 4th. I'll give more information about that towards the end of the presentation, uh, but you can look forward to that. Uh, so the pricing for the service is set at $49 for one year subscription and $99 for a three year subscription. And then like uh, Cindy mentioned earlier, the um, all AAII Platinum subscribers will get access to the AAII Retirement Investing once it has been released. And you should keep an eye out for further details in your inbox as well as the AAII website. Um, all members will get information about when the release, um, you know, when it will occur, um, more information about pricing and things like that, also uh, benefits and offerings. And um, like I said before, please visit the link located in the PDF handout uh, that you see on the screen or that you've downloaded and also in the chat section of today's webinar. Uh, to, and that will give you access to more information about when it will go live and then um, if you um, are interested in getting early access to it. We'll say while we're waiting, you want to talk about some of the things you're covering, going to cover in the fireside chats, some of the early, what uh, members can expect, uh, some of the initial fireside chats? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the first fireside chat focuses on the financial independence retire early movement, which basically that's, it's very interesting because if you're going to retire early, not only do you have the problem of um, potentially outliving your assets, you need to be able to plan to use those assets. And, you know, how are you going to have enough money to go um, all of those extra years? So that was one of the first fireside chats that we did. And then um, the next one we are working on, we're going to focus on kind of um, how, how do you change your asset allocation as you are preparing for retirement. So you're coming out of that safe being space and moving into the um, preparation phase. What things do you need to do to um, get ready? What things do you need to focus on to move forward? And the final fireside chat is the um, no spend down with the principal. So working um, with your assets to kind of create that cash cushion and use um, those you know, buffer strategies, the bucket strategies, so that you are not um, touching your principal. And those are the fireside chats that we're working on right now. Okay, great. Well, I'm not seeing any questions coming through. So um, I guess any, any uh, final, any words of advice or uh, guidance uh, for our attendees? Uh, I'm, Really excited about this. Thank you for attending today. And we look forward to providing great quality content that will help you make the best investment decisions for your retirement.
Thanks, Sunny. Uh, well, I think everyone here at the organization is very excited about this newsletter, and uh, we think you all will, will find it very useful. We are we are creating it uh, uh, for you, our members, uh, and, and we look forward to uh, having you join us. Definitely. And um, I want to offer a big thanks to both Charles and Cindy for emphasizing the importance of specialized education in tackling retirement challenges like inflation, rising health care costs, and longer life expectancy. So I'm excited to see all the content that's um, going to be released. And um, if you have any questions for Charles or Cindy about today's presentation or AAII Retirement Investing as a whole, uh, please send an email to members at aaii.com or you can reach out to them directly. Uh, they've left their emails in um, on the question slide that's uh, available right now. And if you enjoyed our presentation today, please check out our archive and upcoming webinars at aaii.com slash webinars. Uh, we will have an official webinar to unveil AAII Retirement Investing on October 4th, 2023 at 1 p.m. Central. And at that time, we will do a full website walkthrough and content walkthrough. And just remember, remind everyone today, if you joined late or um, you just want to, uh, just another reminder is uh, today's recession is recorded. Uh, the replay and all resources will be available tomorrow on AAII's YouTube channel, as well as the website and along with the official handout uh, that we've included today. And for those who attended, you can also expect uh, to receive the recording and the handout in your inbox tomorrow afternoon, somewhere around 3 p.m. Uh, Central Time. And with that, we wish all of you viewing good health, good fortune, and a great rest of your day. Thank you so much and take care. Happy investing. Thank you.